Okay. So I got this call yesterday. <laughs> yesterday morning. <laughs> and he said, Oh, can you do a testimony? And, and you know me, I kind of can say no. So I hesitantly said, Yes, I will try. But inside myself, I was questioning. Why last minute? Why me? Why me again? Um, and and my, my schedule was just so full. I mean, really full that I already committed to a wedding of a Vandalist daughter that we were helping out. Um, really, while I was doing all the work, just to work, you know, my mind just kept moving. I, I tried. I tried to start doing something. <coughs> My, my my feeling was not like there. Um, and um, so I, I really wanted to beg off and even suggested uh, maybe uh, Renee can do it or maybe Google can do it. So at least half the, the, the burden will be passed on. Um, but so it was only after past midnight, <coughs> after the midnight last night, that I, I said, I prayed and I said, I can't do this. On my own, so I pray uh, that the Lord would give you the right words to, uh, to say and to have the courage to speak given the, the very little time, short notice. Um, and was I, was, but I was praying and thinking of how I should honor God through this uh, testimony. The, Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, My dear Denny, take courage. You do not need to talk about yourself because I really don't want to talk about myself. Speak about me and what I have done and speak of my goodness. And I will be with you. So even as I'm saying this, I know that he is with me because I don't know what to say. So I changed my attitude by thinking that standing as a witness for Christ should not be a burden. But really look at it as a privilege um, to let people know the Lord had called me to become not a fan, but a committed follower. How he has changed my life and how he has drawn me to a saving faith that leads me now to stand in front of you, proclaiming that my identity is no longer mine, but in Christ Jesus. But I can't just go um, saying that without having to have some facts. And uh, I apologize if I have to speak a little bit about my life and my myself. Um, so it was summer of 2007. I just turned 50 around that time. And it was also in this place, in this, in this church, that I was called by God. It was a different calling and I wasn't sure what was happening, but I just had a sense that it was from Him. Um, I would describe myself as a fairly good, uh, decent, God-fearing girl. I was raised in with moral values and was raised knowing Jesus. Uh, went to re religious and rituals of what is expected. Um, so I, I, I felt that I, you know, I pretty much tried to do my best. Um, but the more I heard of the word, the more it was revealed to me that I am a sinner, just like most of us, um, faced with testing and uh, trials and challenges, um, and I needed the grace of God. And when I accepted Jesus to reign in my heart and to be my personal Lord and Savior, I didn't fully understand what happened, but God knew. For nothing happens by accident with God. He allowed bad things to happen even to good people. I don't have a sensational story to speak of because I am just an ordinary girl going through the normal ups and downs of life. But with God, 
he can use any story, ordinary, great, small, but he also used the lowest point in my life so that he can turn my mess into his message. So as I mentioned, I fairly lived a very comfortable life. I was sheltered. Uh, went to best schools in the Philippines, I uh, was Thomas girl, youngest among uh, three, two older brothers. And while I enjoyed a pretty easy and comfortable life, uh, since my father was a good provider, um, I knew that um, God gave me some talents and blessings all, all along. As I said, God was always part of me and was with me. I knew that. I knew that in my head. Um, um, but, but I was also given that a privilege to be part of a family that just didn't took care of our own. The motto of my, my dad was uh, to teach his children, me, how to be selfless. And, and I take pride in the way that the Lord used my parents because I, I was brought up in a sort of like a, a very nationalistic environment. Uh, my, my, uh, my parents instilled to me uh, how to be compassionate for others. Um, they fought for freedom. They uh, exposed me to the poverty, to the uh, impoverished uh, situation in the Philippines, even if he was giving the best um, to, to make life easy for me. Um, but I would just admire those people that gave their lives, went on uh, defending the poor, uh, fighting for freedom, the oppressed, the injustices. I was, you know, I was just admiring them, not knowing that while I was being exposed to all of those, there was a greater love that is being exposed to me so that I can learn how to be compassionate to others. So that I had to tell this so that I you know where I was coming from, a family that really dedicated their life to help the, uh, the marginalized and, and the oppressed. So as I said, I was sort of like admiring them, you can do your own thing, I have my own, I was, you know, full of myself. And sure enough, the Lord did bless me. I was uh, a young, you know, as a teenager, he, blessed, he was able to travel extensively um Bayanina and Madrigal Singers as ambassadors for Christ and not very many had that opportunity but he gave it to me and I knew it was from him and I thanked him dearly um, but still as you go on your own you know you kind of just get get, get absorbed of your own uh, own life so at any, at any rate um, so I knew that I was seeking more um, and that led me later on, as I, much, much later, uh, I was like the late bloomer. Um, sure, when you, uh, when God shows you love, He shows you it gently. Like, I knew of love, but I never really knew how to love my children until I became a mother. Just to say, or, uh, or love somebody until I became a wife. So as you go through the process in life, the door, the, the door of your heart becomes bigger and bigger. So, um, so there are, as I said, there are ups and downs. Um, and because of the nationalistic ideals um, in my heart, while I was raising my three kids at that time in, in the East Coast, uh, I became an activist. Uh, a nationalist, a commu community organizer, and I used the talent that the Lord gave me to, to be able to express through art uh, and expose the, you know, the bad things that's happening in the world, especially in the Philippines at that time. And because of that craving to give back to the country Philippines, after 13 years living in New York, we decided to go back to the Philippines. To, to give back to the to the country. Again, we were so very idealistic. So you know, I, I, I'm saying this again because we, I'm just trying to piece together where the hand of the Lord was leading us. 
leading me and my family. So we went back again, um, trying to give back, trying to, to help. I served in church. I was singing in the music ministry. I was involved in so many kinds of um, mission work. Okay. I was looking for something. But then my fourth son came. I got pregnant on my fourth, and that was a reason for us to go back. Somehow the three years in the Philippines didn't quite um, you know, uh, fulfill us of what we were looking for. And again, when we came back, we, we moved to California. I got involved in so many community organizing work, Bantai Paka, Bantai Paka, all the charity works, all the good works. Up until one time, the Lord used me, my third son. He was invited in a youth ministry from this church. Um, and he, when he came back after a three-day retreat, he said, Mom, this is the church that I want to go to. And knowing me, I said, why? What, is that a call? Uh, especially in my mind, what is the difference between this church and the other church that we were going to when I practically have to drag him every day, try to wake up somebody who's already awake, just for you to go to church. And all of a sudden, see, this is a church you want to go to, you want to serve the Lord, you want, it was um, something like an eye-opener for me. So I was driving him, and as I was sitting in the same spot that there were all nice here, listening to the word, listening to the music, everything was different. It was not the same building that I used to go to, uh, the solemnity is different, the prayer, the worship is different. And yet, the Lord used something. And at one time, nobody, nobody ever asked me, would you like to receive Jesus in your heart and surrender yourself? And I said, one time when I was the only one that stood up and went in front, and I said, yeah, I'm ready. I, I want to receive you. And everybody congratulated me after a while. They prayed over me, and I said, what is the big deal? I thought I had him all about. much, much later than I understood it. It was really the Holy Spirit that asked me to move to say that enough is enough. You've done your way all this time, your own thing, and he used the lowest point in my life at the time. Because prior to that, I was praying, Lord, what, why is this happening? Why is my life all of a sudden changing from a very comfortable life to something that's unsure? We are financially unstable. I've been losing homes from 10 homes that I've built, accumulated, because this is how they kind of train you here in America to build wealth, wealth, accumulation. And I was in that field. And I built, like, you know, we built, like, we bought 10 homes. You know, I don't really need one, but we have 10. But the Lord slowly took that out because He knew. I have better plans for you, my dear lady. That is not my plan. It is not the treasure of this world that you should be looking at. Not even the friends, not even the people. It is me that you should be looking at. So that the first, seek me first in this kingdom and his righteousness became so alive. And the, the verse that you said, you are seeking me. And, you, and I said, you seek me and you will find me. You do not know. Uh, I will not have the door open it and I am there. So truly, he was showing himself, revealing himself. And I said, at, at that time of the, the salvation, when people were saying, like, congratulating me, I didn't know what was happening. I just knew that I was ready and prepared to give my, my life to him. But what I was there in for, everybody, I remember even one of the ladies here approached, hey, now that you received, oh, I think it was Marianne. Hey, did you know it was a warning? Now that you just received the Lord, do you know that you'll have more trials? Okay. Okay. Um, you're going to get two more and you have to read them. And there was another, um, uh, there was another comment by this, uh, Dr. Ness. He said, oh, uh, you're just a beginner, so let's see, maybe five years. Maybe you're still going to be around. I prepared, as I said, um, it was like, um, the Lord just speak to me and then 
but I'm, I'm doing now. So, so really, um, I didn't know. At that time, I knew I could serve because I am the type of person that was sort of a year out to move my past. So I just go, Pastor says, oh, we need you here, and there. You know, we're training for this, and there. Oh, this is what we're supposed to be doing as Christians, and there. But I don't know, oh, um, we need to, uh, to evangelize. We need to put the tracks, give the tracks. And I said, oh, okay, we'll give tracks to the mom. Oh, we're not supposed to do that because we're not allowed to to do that here. So I didn't really know how to share my faith, but I know that the heart of God was showing to others. That's all you need to do. Tell about me. Talk about me. It is not about you. Never about you. You are nothing without me. So, okay, so, but how do I do? I feel like I know how to bring people, but I don't know how to close. How do I close? How do I get them to surrender? And again, I thought I was doing it, not the Spirit doing it, but sure enough, we were trained by uh, Pastor Rene and uh, extensive on the job training to evangelize, to share the gospel. And we did that. Uh, and, you know, we were again blessed to be able to go through that. And it was only then that truly I grasped the, and understood what the gospel was all about. Because you have to teach it, you have to know it yourself. So we were doing that for a while. And yet again, I, I heard a comment from Dr. Adam. He said, it's not fair. You can't just say and, and give all your five pointers on salvation. And it's just like giving birth to someone and it's just leaving them alone. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So we, we ventured into discipleship. <coughs> so, Lord, this is a new ground again. So one after the other, the Lord is just so amazing because he will just truly equip you. You don't know when you're going to be called and you've been called. And just like the call that I received from Pastor Ron, you're just, I'm just here um, to give an inspiration, an encouragement, an opening for everyone to remain faithful because our God is a faithful God and He will always be there. I am so grateful that He has chosen me, a very simple, ordinary girl, but has given me tasks and a passion in my heart to for greater things and together now that our focus is truly what our name is Christ Commission Fellowship our commission is to go and make disciples and that again is what the focus of what this church is all about so again I still continue to do my life verse which I have uh, <coughs> claimed that um, that's Romans uh, 8.28 that you know that all things work together for good to those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So may God, may all the glory and honor be to God. Amen. Yeah.